Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee and it's great that you could stop by for today's video. This video is actually the continuation of last week's video where I upgraded my 2004 iMac G5 with 2 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte SSD and found <laughs> the happy thought uh, there actually was an airport card in there. You have to see if that uh, if that works. Um, so I did all those things, put the machine back together, plugged in the power cord and the keyboard and mouse and my FireWire drive of installers. Pressed the power button, nothing. No light, no chime, not a sound, just nothing. Well. I left it there for a while and I would every now and again as I walked past press the button. I finally moved it upstairs and same thing. Now I finally needed that FireWire installer drive for another project which and it's working fine. Uh, but once again I went past the iMac and just for the heck of it pressed the button it started up. Now of course it couldn't boot because it's got an unformatted a blank SSD in there, but it did start up. Now through experimentation I found that for whatever reason whenever I had uh, the a, a FireWire drive plugged in there it would not start. It was absolutely dead. Alright, so we're going to pick up today with the machine turning on and the adventures of putting operating systems onto that machine. If you find that this will be an interesting thing, and I hope you do, please stay tuned. Okay, just to catch you up, I tried rebooting the machine with the FireWire installer drive plugged in. It would not start, it would not start, it would not start, nothing. I thought I'd killed it. It boots up without uh, the FireWire drive plugged in, but I mean the disk hasn't been formatted, there's nothing on it, there's nothing boot from. I put a Panther DVD that I burned in there. It won't start. Now that's stuck. Uh, I have several plans as to how to rectify this. Uh, the first one I think I'm going to try is throwing the target disk mode and seeing if I can connect it to my other iMac just to just to get out of this uh, because it, it won't eject. Well anyway, stay tuned. Never mind. I, eject, I was trying holding the mouse button down when I started it up and it wouldn't eject the disk. I tried holding the eject button on the keyboard down and it popped right out. Okay. Uh, I think, since I know I can get a disc out, maybe I'll try putting a leopard disc in and see what that does. Stay tuned. Okay, let's put the leopard DVD in. It won't go in until the machine is started up. Light came on, and we get the chime. Okay, DVD went in. And drive spinning up. There's our apple. Of course, the Panther DVD did this. Okay, we get a progress meter. All right, this is, it's a DVD. It's going to take a while, so I'll bring you back when something has happened. Stay tuned. And we are in the installer. All right, we will use English, of course. Uh, 
right. Now, I've, I've got this set for the camera. So pardon me if this takes me a while. Utilities, we've got to go to disk utility. Here's disk utility. All right, now here is our drive. I'm going to partition it. Two partitions. that 40 and panther because one way or uh, panther SSD one way or not no. panther SSD one way or another panther is going to be on this machine all right, and the bulk of the disk will be Leopard. All right. Let's go partition. That's looking good. We can get out of disk utility then. And back into the installer. All right, call it Leopard. Customize, additional fonts, no, printer, printer drivers, only Lexmark, language translations, no, X11, yes, okay. Let's install. Okay, now this is a DVD install, it's going to take quite a while. So, stay tuned. So, it's saying about 56 minutes, 52 minutes. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a little bit less than that because it's zipping along 45 minutes. So, let's, let's hope. Stay tuned. Of course, I remember installing uh, Leopard on the computer that I had. This is a twin to my first uh, working Mac. Uh, and the time that it would take. It is bringing me back. Well, okay. Just wanted to share that with you. Stay tuned. In fact, maybe this is just as well. I was planning on doing the install using the FireWire drive. But the machine would not boot up uh, at all. It would do nothing with the Fire dr FireWire drive plugged in. Uh, but since this is the first Mac that I had, and when I installed Leopard, I used a DVD that I bought at the Apple Store. This is appropriate. Okay, again, an another little share with you. Stay tuned. Okay, install succeeded. So we're going to restart. It never did go to less than a minute. I was going to bring you back when it said less than a minute, but it said about a minute, and then bang, install succeeded. It uh, 
half an hour maybe. I didn't time it. I probably should have. All right. Here we are restarting. I'll bring you back, hopefully, when the welcome video comes up. Stay tuned. We are just about there. See the spinning beach ball. And here it is. Try to turn the sound down a little bit, but it's not too loud because I turned it down earlier. I always thought this was the best welcome video. A lot of people really love the tiger welcome video. And the music gets a little funny, but this is just cool. And this is perfect, having installed it from the DVD. Here we are with the party that happens. It's gorgeous. Okay. All right, now, here's where I will take my life in my hands. Leopard is installed. So I'm gonna plug a firewire drive in. Give it a second to boot up. And we're going to pick from a time machine back up. And then continue. Okay, it's found my time machine back up. All right. So, Firewire does work. Uh, what I had been expecting to do uh, once I finished the upgrades was to boot it from a Firewire installer and install. But, <laughs> that didn't work because when I tried it, nothing happened. I pressed the power button. I, I honestly thought the machine was dead. Okay, so this is going to take a while, so please stay tuned. Well, I should state, you know, I am transferring from a FireWire backup. It's the FireWire backup from uh, my other iMac. I have an uh, iMac 2005 which is set up that I use very frequently. Uh, so I'm now uh, transferring that installation uh, to the one on this 2004 iMac. Okay, stay tuned. I should point out that Migration Assistant uh, was something new with uh, Leopard. Tiger did get it, but as a software update later on, I never noticed it because I skipped Tiger altogether, all straight from Panther to Leopard. Okay, we got about 13 minutes remaining, so please stay tuned. Well, it says less than a minute remaining. Uh, of course, we know what that means with macOS installations. Uh, but we should be just about there. It looks like it's going to work. Stay tuned. Okay. Everything's transferred. So we should be able to do command quit. And then oh, put the mouse around backwards.
we'll skip this and then I'll finish setting up. So, stay tuned. Well, here we are on the desktop, and you know, the like, first thing I notice, that airport card is working. We do have Wi-Fi. Uh, our two gigabyte of RAM is there. So far, it's, oh, 10.5.1. I do have software updates to do. I haven't done a clean install of Leopard in a long time. I might have forgotten. Uh, but let's look at System Profiler. Okay, yeah, this this uh, optical drive will write CDs. Let's look at disk burning. Yeah, it reads DVDs, yes. But it'll only read DVDs. It won't write them. Well, that's okay. I haven't got a problem. I don't like using the, uh, the slot-loading drives anyway, so I, I rarely would use it. Uh, graphs and displays. It's just obviously the same as it was in there before. NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200, 64 megabytes of video RAM. Uh, enough. There's both of our RAM modules showing up. Uh, airport card, yeah. Yep, there we go. We do have airport. All right. So, I've got software updates to run. Be interesting to see how long it takes uh, doing it over Wi-Fi since I have not got it plugged in. But you don't need to uh, sit through all of this. There's going to be some restarts. There's going to be all sorts of stuff. So, while it's looking for that, stay tuned. Yeah, it's pretty darn slow Wi-Fi. 30 minutes to download 768 megabytes. Ah, oh, the old days. Well, anyway, you don't have to wait through it. Stay tuned. That was going to take so long, I took pity on myself and plugged it into Ethernet. Uh, it will go a lot faster now. Stay tuned. All right. The updates are complete. You, unlike with Tiger, you only have to run software update three times. Although I will say the combo updater to 10.5.8, which is where we are now, as you can see, uh, takes forever. I don't really know why it takes so long. Okay. Now. plugged in the installer drive again. We're going to see if with an OS installed will we be able to boot from a Firewire drive. Okay. So See you on the other side. Stay tuned. Okay, nothing is going to be easy. The Panther sort of will not boot. Uh, and if you listen carefully, you can probably hear that the fans are ramping up like crazy. 
All right, stay tuned. Well, at least the machine still works, so we've got Leopard installed. I really want to get Panther installed. I'm not quite sure why that Panther installer will not work. Oh, uh, well, I'll work on it. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to try to make some sense out of this again. Uh, in my defense, a lot of this was done very late at night. I was exhausted, and the video kind of stopped making a whole lot of sense. Uh, but yes, you, it seemed pretty clear up to the point where I was trying to use the Firewire drive uh, of installers again. That didn't work. It simply wouldn't boot up. Um, so, I, I went through several thoughts of what to do next, and what I ended, I mean, I thought of target disk mode and cloning and, or target disk mode and running on another machine, running the installer on another machine to install onto that partition. What I finally came up with is the simplest method is to clone, and, and that's pretty much where I am now. The next clip you're going to see was the last one I shot last night, where I cloned the Panther installation from the world's most powerful sawtooth. Now that's a, a very bare bones basic installation, pretty much clean, so it's kind of as though I installed it uh, clean. I believe I did do the updates to it, but that's about it. Uh, so you're going to see a very kind of out of it clip where I did that cloning and then we'll be seeing if we can actually clone it back. Please stay tuned and thank you for your attention. Okay, we're going to try now. Now this crucial uh, drive leopard applications I'm going to have a cloner panther two crucial Okay, you've seen this before. Let's hope this works. Stay tuned. All right. We're back here on the iMac, uh, and I have plugged in the Crucial SSD. This, of course, is the cloned version of Panther taken from, uh, you know, the What's Most Powerful Sawtooth. All right. Oh boy, I hope Carbon Copy Cloner is on here. Yes, it is. Okay. Select the source, Crucial SSD. Select the destination, Panther SSD. All right. And, we got all that right? Yes. We'll clone. Now I'll have to authenticate. Okay, and here we go. Um, this probably won't take too long, but of course there's no need for you to wait through it, so stay tuned. And the cloning has finished. Uh, really wasn't bad at all, 12 minutes and three seconds, but you can see data copied 1.66 gigabytes. That's Panther. Times have changed. I'm going to eject Crucial Drive now. Its task is complete. And unplug it. I don't want a chance what would happen if I try to reboot. So the big thing we've got to find now
It says it's there, and it is 10.3.9, so I have updated. All right. Can we actually boot into it? This is the only way to find out. There's the chime. Okay, you don't need to sit through all of this. It may take a while. Stay tuned. Well, this is looking promising. We've got a progress wheel. That is more than we ever got trying to boot into an installer. Hey, welcome to Macintosh. I'd forgotten that it said that. By golly, look at this. Look at this. Mac OS X version 10.3.9 on our 1.6 gigahertz PowerPC G5 with 2 gigabytes of RAM. How about that? We got it done. Man, what an adventure this was. Well, anyhow, I thank you very much for however many people had the drive to stay through to the end of I have no idea how long this video is going to be it's a record number of clips to go into a, one of my videos I'm sure uh, but most of those clips are like a minute a little more a little less uh, so may not be all that long but anyhow be good to other people other people need it and deserve it be good to yourselves. Has to begin from there. We can make this world a better place. It isn't yet, so please take very, very good and careful care. All right, we're going to be back with you with a lot more stuff. Um, I think we're probably done with this machine, although you never know. I've got to go back and do something with the digital audio still. I've got some Power Mac G5 things in the works. Uh, so, we're... we're we're going to move on. Until those things are, in fact, alive on the channel here, this has been Broken Electronics.